him picking up like with a lot of stuff. Like even now, I got a little cat. So he's gonna let me do my part first and I gotta get out of here and head out. Yeah. I have um business for I mean though Dallas State, which is Yeah, and um it's not far, it's in Baltimore, but my sister is waiting for me helping her with her business. All right. So, well, let's, uh, it's, this is just an idea. I saw this big story in the newspaper about these supermarkets. And ShopRite is the highest grossing of the supermarkets. So I said, maybe I could get them to undergo a show of help. Or if you have an idea that we might be able to sell to a supermarket, let me hear it. I mean, not now, but this, this moment I'm going to talk about. <laughs> See you, my brother. All right, all right. I'm one of your children from of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the oldest one. Oh, Billy's the oldest one, right? Yeah, Billy's the oldest one. Right, okay. Okay. We're going to turn on the station and listen to you. All right, right brother. You'll have a good show. Oh, yeah. Bye, home. Oh, <laughs> Right, Facebook Live listeners. We are on the air. I'm going here. We call y'all. I know. Come over, so you can get in the jam. If the AC can follow me, I heard that. I got that down a block. Put that tower down. I know. Put that thing on the floor. Good morning, my children of the sun. Welcome to the open eye. I'm Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist, right here on WHGE 95.3 FM. Are you ready for a hot show? Hey, I know I always say that, but guess what? It's always true, and it's going to be no different today. I tell you what, call your cousin, call your brother, call your mama, tell them to tune in. And yes, we are on Facebook Live this week. I know we had a little problem the past couple of weeks, but this week we are there. We are there, that's for sure. On WHDE 95.3 FM, as usual, I will be joined by my co-host, Neil Saroma, and of course, the beautiful Miss Millard, Lorraine Millard. And we are actually going to get right to our program of the day. Oh, of course, I got up late. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you. You don't have to wait till Saturday to join in. Join us on the open eye. You don't have to turn off the station when the open eye goes off. We got some banging jazz music. Every time our host goes off the air, we're going to hold you with great music. 
from Mr. Uh, Harvey Carey's father's collection. And I mean, you want to hear some banging jazz? Tune in to WHDE 95.3 FM. And of course, today at 4 will be Ed Johnson's Sports Zone. Ed Johnson, an old friend of mine, I don't remember not knowing Ed. And if you want to know what's going on in the sports world, you want to tune in at 4. If you want to know what's going on in your city, tune in at 5 with Alan Lawrence, who hosts the Week in Review. He will definitely keep you hip to what's going on in the city. And of course, uh, following Alan will be our illustrious leader, whose daily show, Black History Facts and Reflections, will give you, oh man, all you need to know about our history. What happened today in Black history, you want to find out? Harmon Terry has the only daily show covering Black History Facts right here on WHDE 95.3 FM. Okay, you know, like I said, we are going to get right to our program of the day. We are not going to mess around. And guess what? They're <laughs> saying. They know what that means. The name of that tune is Early Summer by yours truly, Patrice Gibbs. Overnight, listeners know what that means. If you hear that tune, it's time for The Organic Path with Lorraine. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Mr. Gibbs. How are you doing? I am doing well. All right, and all right. I hope all is well with the listeners. So I will get right to it. Right. And today I'm just going to talk a few minutes about supporting your local farms mm -hmm. uh, and local farmers. Right. Um, so this segment is brought to you. If you want more information, you can find us on EcoWatch. Okay. So Economy EcoWatch. Mm -hmm. EcoWatch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I've known for a little while that it is very good to support your local farmers and purchase produce markets from the local farmers mm. and there are uh, several benefits why so i'm just going to talk about three of them why support your local farmers so here are good reasons why i support local farmers and the benefits one more freshness mm. and let me tell you why local food is fresher healthier and tastes better because it spends less time in transit mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, from where it comes from to your plate. Therefore, it uh, you don't lose the nutrients mm -hmm. or fewer nutrients are lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, and incurs less spoilage. And one is when fruit is picked from another area and it has to travel. Mm -hmm is generally picked earlier mm -hmm. and that's why sometimes you see real real green bananas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um most people that eat fruit like myself know when it's maybe picked a little too early you want to wait a little bit because it's still kind of fresh and it has some some fruit has more bitter taste okay it's been picked early because they need that time for it to travel. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. doesn't spoil. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you notice, if you pull one banana off, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the bunch that you get, it ripens very quick. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the market, sometimes you will see that that's one of the reasons why. Mm -hmm. So the food is, uh, is fresher. And to the, the soil, um, if it's local and it's locally grown, uh, the soil and everything. So that's where the nutrients and everything play a part mm -hmm. as far as why eat or choose the local farmers. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, well, no, I got ahead of myself. I said of freshness. This is something that I was talking about, but I already said it. So it doesn't have to travel as far. Mm -hmm. um, to arrive on your plate. So it helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions mm -hmm. and contributes to improving our carbon footprint. So it benefits the economy. So the traveling, the gas, and those trucks that they haul it in to get it to you at your door, mm -hmm. on your plate, 
So the economy and everything, the pollution in the air, so all of that matters. Mm. Okay. Um, also to the last part, but not least, locally grown food helps communities. Mm -hmm. Because when you support or buy directly from the farmer, you are building a relationship while also helping to support local farmers who are providing for you as well as their family. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. And it's a wonderful thing to support the local farmers. Of course. I don't know about you, but I've seen and I can only imagine and put two and two together. I've never been a farmer, but I know the work that they do. Mm -hmm. They get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. My was so do I, but not to do farming. No, I heard that, that is work yeah. in the hot sun. And I've been around farmers when their day is done. They pretty much don't complain. That's uh, yeah. That's amazing. They really they work hard and mm -hmm. till the ground. So if you never till the ground, mm -hmm. pulled up any weeds mm -hmm. <laughs> on acres and acres of land, mm -hmm. you know you gotta appreciate them. Of course. So support the local farmers. What they bring to you, it took work. Yeah, of course. And I remember working in the medical field for sixteen years, and our uh, the person that was responsible for the food, I'm telling you, they made a decision to support local farm farmers, mm -hmm. and the food was absolutely delicious. And it was so much to the point where, as an employee, if you did not work the earlier shift, the food was almost out on the night shift. Wow. Because not patients, mm -hmm. customers from the outside mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. to eat the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about that? Because we didn't have bagged food, okay. bagged soup. Mm -hmm. It was all fresh, mm -hmm. straight up from the garden, mm -hmm. and the food was just great. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder, remember, drink up, drink water. Okay. If your kidneys is putting out more water than you're putting in, there's a problem. So mm -hmm. if you remember those segments before, drink plenty of water. We've had some really, really hot days. Yeah. Not only hot, but the humidity factor has been really, really high. And remember, we don't want anyone going through a sunstroke, heat stroke, mm -hmm. because it's real. Mm -hmm. Some people do not recuperate. Yeah, that's true. So drink lots of water and just think it the more water you drink, you just might love water more than any other drink. Mm -hmm. So drink up, do not let your body temperature get over 104 because that's severe mm -hmm. and eat fruits and vegetables right. let's enjoy the summer and enjoy what the summer the grounds has to offer okay mm -hmm. all right well i would be remiss especially when you're talking about you know local farmers and with that if i did not mention that right across the street from the radio station we pass them every saturday morning is the urban acre uh, produce community owned farm stand and they are urban farmers who sell their, um, you know, their produce, for, uh, fresh, fresh fruit and vegetables, right here on the corner of Tenth and Pine. Don't be ashamed. Is that Tenth and Pine? Knife and Pine. I'm sorry. Right here on the corner of Knife and Pine, right caddy corner from the radio station. Hey, come on around and support them. Yes, and I, I purchased last week. Right. Supported them. I purchased me. Some lemons, fresh cucumbers, apple. Mm -hmm. They have all kind of things. They have cantaloupe, peaches. They and have all, all kind of fruits fresh. and vegetables, yeah. all fresh potatoes, all fresh. onions. Yep. Yes, please support them. They're yes, right indeed. next door. The Urban Acre Produce Community Owned Farm Stand. All right. And that has been the Organic Pet with Lorraine, which is sponsored by Organic Supplements LLC. My Lakaya. That's M Y W A. K A Y A dot com. All right. Drink up. W H T E 95.3 FM. So <laughs> can I. And say good morning to Sherry. Good morning, Sherry. Hey, hey, Sherry. We miss, did yeah. we miss you last week? I need that picture, Sherry, of you and your open eye t shirt assistant. Yeah, good morning, Sherry. Yeah, yeah we missed last week because, you know, we didn't get the. Uh, Oh yeah, that's right. So yeah. she probably was on. She'll yes. she'll respond back yes. to us. Yeah. And also, we've been joined by Roderick Carey, who is our illustrious leader's son. 
I'm pretty sure that's uh, Harmony's yeah, son. Yeah, okay. Hi, Mr. Carey. Yes, sir. Nice yes, to sir. have you with us. All right, all right. All right. What is Nelson on the coming? Because <laughs> he used to tell you on a weekly basis, yeah, yeah. so if he will be a little late. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but really um, I'm going to say leave the leave that. All right. Yeah, you need to do a lot. And Harvey said he's more worried about people running up on me, he's worried about the people that run up on me. No, <laughs> I get that, but that's yeah, not where my heart is. Right? Know, you I understand know. what yeah. I mean by that. That's yeah. just a little weird that he wanted to buy, borrow a highlighter. That's what I'm saying. I could put two and two together, and from the information that you just, you and him just exchanged, that just don't sound right to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I feel you. People have to take responsibility of their own actions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so All right, have a safe trip. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we had technical difficulties last week, but we good this week. As to our uh, Facebook Live listening. Man, take a That's Dizzy Gillespie's man, take a You know, I love Dizzy. All right, you know, I often and I know maybe some of y'all get tired of it, but I'm drilling it. I'm drilling it. Why it is so important to study our history. I think that is one of the most important things we do. One of the reasons is if like, you know, we've had so many of our historians tell us if you don't know your past, you don't know your future. You know, Marcus Garvey said, you know, a tree without roots will not flourish. You know, I'm paraphrasing there. But and I've run this over and over again, and I'm going to keep until people get it. For people, why it's so important to study our history, for people to oppress another people, three things must be taken from them. History, language, and their psychological factor. Psychological factors are what we call VIPs, values, interests, and principles. You take these from them. Take their history, language, and principles, and, and impose the history, language, and values, interests, and principles of their oppressor on them, and no matter what conclusions they come to and the challenges they face, they will always act in the interest of the oppressor that took their history, language, and values, interests, and principles. So when we wonder why the choices we make serve, don't never serve our own best interests, you have to change the paradigm. You have to study your own history, language, values, interests, and principles. Okay? Thing is, you have to know the truth about the history. Now, uh, we just had the 4th of July and what have you, and often, even now, here in America, there is still the North South fight, believe it or not. And of course, what comes out of that is that. Lincoln freed the slaves. That Lincoln was a great emancipator. That Lincoln was, you know, a, a great friend of the black man. Well, I got news for you. That just was not so. He did not free black people from slavery out of any, you know, moral compass that he may have had or any love for black people. You know, uh, Lincoln said that, you know, a house divided, of course, cannot stand. And whatever he had to do to save the union, he would do. If he could save the union by keeping black people slaves, he would do so. If he could save the union by freeing black people, he would do so. And of course, it was in the best interest to free the black people because, especially once the uh, Civil War started, because what the Northern forces found out was that they were not going to win that war, the Civil War, without the help of the black man. Now, Lincoln, I'm quote here from Abraham Lincoln, the so-called great emancipator. 
Let me tell you this first. Um, the Republicans like to call themselves the party of Lincoln, you know, that you know they were so righteous and this, that, and the other. Of course, the mythology is, of course, that Lincoln was for the equality of all and this, that, and the other. And the Republicans like to claim that they are the party of Lincoln. And of course, we know better than that. They are not the party of Lincoln. The Republicans that were, you know, uh, around during Abraham Lincoln's time were far removed from anything that the Republicans are now. Of course, uh, during those days, the Democrats were the party of the South, and they were, you know, the party of, of racism and bigotry and the oppression of Black people. And what happened was, and once again, know your history, what happened was when Johnson, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson was president and signed the Civil Rights Act, and Nixon employed the Southern strategy, he attracted the white Southern racist Democrats to the Republican Party. And they followed in droves, finally, following, uh, finally you know, solidifying their support for Republicans with the election of Ronald Reagan. Uh, Lincoln was the Republican Party of that day, the party of Lincoln? No, actually, it was the party of a man named Thaddeus Stevens. Thaddeus Stevens and his followers, known as the Radical Republicans, Thaddeus Stevens was a staunch opponent of, of, of slavery and the oppression of black people. And he was so much an integrationist that he refused to be buried in an all white cemetery. Okay, so actually, what was known as the party of Lincoln was really the party of Thaddeus Stevens, who drug Lincoln, uh, you know, to the to the left politically, kicking and screaming. Abraham Lincoln said, "I will not. I will say then that I am not, nor have ever been, in favor of bringing about in any way social and political equality in the white and black races." that I have not nor ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. And I will say in addition to this, that there is a physical difference between white and black races, which I believe will forever prevent the two races from living together on terms of social and political equality. And, and, and in so much as they cannot so live while they do remain together there must be the position of superior and inferior and i as much as any other man am in favor of having the support position assigned to the white race that's from abraham lincoln the great emancipator okay you know a lot of uh, people are unaware that slavery was less than 150 years ago which is no more than three generations that's not a on, on, on the, the clock of history, that's 10 minutes ago, not even that. Mm -hmm. The transatlantic trans slave trade started in the 1400s and slavery legally ended in 1865 in the U.S. Let me tell you something. Of all the countries in what was called the New World, that, and, and, and including countries in Europe though, as well, that uh, had slavery, the United States is the only country that had to have a war to end slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, over 400 years of social engineering, brainwashing, and terror, blacks have endured. This dysfunctional behavior has been passed down from generation to generation. And unfortunately, it is going to take more than 150 years to properly reverse this mindset. Blacks never received psychological therapy after they were legally free. They were just forced to get over it and move on. And of course, we should all know about the horrors of the Jim Crow era and racism today. Blacks never really had a chance to reinvent themselves because they, we have always been under attack in America. We've always been under the pressure of racism and oppression here in America on top of suffering PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder. I refuse to ignore or downplay my ancestors' experiences. 
Stop allowing others to tell you how to feel about our history, especially since it plays such a critical role in our condition as a people today, economically, socially, and mentally. On Patrice Gibbs, this is the open eye. Y'all feel me? Sean Harrison, welcome. Well, if you want to support the Open Eye, make sure you always catch us on YouTube and, of course, on Facebook. I do rebroadcast our Facebook uh, live segments every every week. Usually, I do it on Monday, and also have a Patreon page, which there will be a link on the rebroadcast. Sometimes I have a listening party, and I'll include the link on there. All right, let's get back with live on the air on the radio. Here, we got some people want to hear what's going on here. This is Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist, right here on the open eye. I uh, hope you think about what I just shared with you and understand what we are actually up against. Historically, slavery was the worst thing that ever happened to a people. And most and most slavery was mental rather than physical. One of the biggest side effects of slavery is the fact that it made us afraid. It made us afraid to take responsibility for our own destiny. Many brothers and sisters today still do not want the responsibility that comes with nationalism and true revolution. That's a quote from Dr. Umar Johnson, and that's right on point. Those are things that I, myself, have walked in uh, related. And we're going to move on here and get back to our experience in a minute. But have you all uh, who've been watching the news, following on social media, seeing this new thing that people are doing for fun, and that's opening products in stores, supermarkets, and what have you. And for instance, what well, one girl, and I hope they catch this girl, and, and well, let me go on. I hope they catch this girl for what she did. She opened a container of ice cream. Lick the ice cream with her nasty mouth self, who knows what she's been doing, and then put the top, put the top back on and put the ice cream back in the freezer for somebody else to buy and take home with her nasty germs in it. Worse than that, there's a guy that opened a bottle of Arizona, and one of those, you know, gallon bottles of Arizona, uh, soft drink and spit it and put it back in the freezer for somebody to buy and take home and drink his nasty germs. I hope these people get a lot of time. Uh, from what I understand, the young lady that did that is facing 20 years, and I would think that, that uh, it didn't stop there. There was a, a girl that went in, I guess she was in some supermarket or drugstore or whatever, and pulled a, a thing of a deodorant off the shelf and used it and put it back. It's wrong with these people. Now, these things don't happen in the vacuum. And of course you have people that want to copycat. So it's spreading around. People are doing this stuff all over now and they think it's funny. It's not funny at all because we don't know what kind of germs or diseases you are carrying. Now, with this girl that started this, uh, when she looked, there was bluebell ice cream. Now the FDA will now require sealed ice cream cartons. Yes, there will be a plastic skin tight seal on ice cream cartons from now on. Of course, this will increase the cost of ice cream as machines will be needed, you know, um, will have to be bought for the plants to seal the cartons, not to mention buying the sealing material and the extra electricity to run the machines. The plastic sealing material would now find its way to already overstuffed landfills, thus taxing the garbage system even more. So remember, when you see the seal on ice cream in the higher price, it was that nasty ass hussy. And it was her fault. She started this. 
And this is what being a dumbass does to the rest of us that are not dumbasses. We don't need that mess. You know, it's an open eye. All right, I don't know where my co-host is. Maybe we're not gonna make it today. We have some things to discuss with y'all, but that's okay. I get some text message you got to get for me. Yeah, right. Anyway, back to uh, what we got going here open line. And I do take phone calls. And, uh, 302 442 661. If you're a reminder, call me if you're that brave to discuss the issues on the air. All uh, right, I'm going to get back to what we got going on here. Dope and I, 95.3 FM. You know, like I said, you don't have to wait till Saturday to tune in to the open eye. We have a full week of uh, broadcast schedule right here at WHG 95.3 FM. On Sundays at 7, following the daily broadcast of Black History Facts and Reflections, on Sunday at 7 is Fixing Addiction with award-winning host Raheem Darden. On Wednesdays, we have Real Love with host Bonnie Williams, that's Wednesdays at 5. All right, on Fridays, we have the Living with Jackson show. That's at 5, from 5 to 6, of course, followed by the daily broadcast of Black History Facts and Reflections. And that is followed by Stop Smoking, No Joking, covering a very important issue, uh, once again, by award-winning host, Raheem Darden. All right, back to the open eye. Okay. Uh, of course, we all know what happened to Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby got sentenced to, uh, I forget how many years they gave the old fella in jail for, uh, you know, supposedly raping these women some 30, 40 years ago and what have you. I personally do not put a time limit. I don't believe in statutes of limitation when the crime is egregious. However, in Mr. Cosby's case, you know, um, it, was, it was real shaky because some of these women that he supposedly raped came back for another date. What rape victim returns to it? Well, anyway, uh, I brought that up to bring up billionaire financier Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Jeffrey Epstein, who should have probably been in jail, you know, has finally been arrested. Um, for you know the things that he and he's a pedophile. He's not just rape, he's a pedophile. Okay. The thing that trips me out about this, he he should have been, he's got many victims out there, what have you, like I said, as a pedophile. The thing that trips me up uh about Mr. Epstein, one, how long it took to get him, because it was obvious that you know what he had given everybody was it was like the worst kept secret in the financial world and in Hollywood and amongst celebrities. You know, he had many uh, celebrity friends that don't want to say nothing about it. It's a mess under the rug, you know. But like I said, here's the thing that really bothers me about Mr. Epstein is the way the press has been handling it. They've been saying that he's been, his victims have been underage women. Okay. In what world is a 14-year-old girl underage woman? She's not an underage woman. She's a child. This pedophile has been raping children. And let me uh, give a shout out right now. Just been joined by my co-host, Mr. Roma. What's up, brother? Yaga. All right. What's all right. good, my brother? What's good? Uh, you good? Uh, well, I'm good, I brother. heard you on the radio. I heard you. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I've been going here. Hey, yo. Uh, I've been going well, here. yo, it's one thing, one thing about if he true. What's that? 
But you be kicking. But oh, you, I mean, I mean, you know, it, 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 it beat me up. I mean, the research you do, oh, you know, you know what bro. I'm saying? It, it be true. So yeah. go ahead. Don't no, let yeah, me yeah, But what I'm talking about is, is, is Epstein. Now, the thing about Epstein is, like I said, first of all, you know, billionaire financier who should have been in jail, pedophile, you know, and, oh, man, he's been, not only is he a pedophile, okay, but he's been running, um, he's been sex trafficking in New York and Florida between 2002 and 2005. The charge comes from the Attorney General's Office of the Southern District of New York 11 years after that thing got off on similar charges through a plea deal. How you let a pedophile plead his way out? You know how? Mm. When, <clears throat> see, money is connection. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're dealing with money, like, I mean, some of the people that you know, mm -hmm. you was getting them for mm -hmm. is in places that's high. Yeah. So you know, you know, on here, that, oh, you know, all them little dirty secrets and mm -hmm. them little skeletons in the closet mm -hmm. and all anything mm -hmm. that you can think of that mm -hmm. it, it, that you can't think of. Mm -hmm. That's what they doing. That's what they doing. And listen to to some of the people he's tied to: former President Clinton, Prince Andrew of of, of Great Britain, and President uh, present President. Orange disaster, Trump. And what is that telling you? It, that that was that was all men names that yeah. you were saying. Yeah. So it wasn't really no women in his uh, entourage. Yeah, but you so, know he has some powerful female friends. Oh, most definitely to yeah. make it really roll. But yeah. I mean that it's like when you got money, mm -hmm. it's it's different because I mean money isn't everything. It's uh, the dirty little secrets you got on people mm -hmm. to, get, to get you out of situations. So if you got dirty little secrets on this judge that's getting ready to put mm -hmm. you under the jail, you're not going to get put under the jail mm -hmm. anymore. You're going to get put on the roof. Yeah, especially if you're a pedophile sex trafficker and that judge may be one of your customers. Exactly. <laughs> so that's how deep things can run within the society of America because it's a business and everyone is looking at America as the American dream because the dream is to come in on your own business mm -hmm. and then once you get in business you can be a billionaire or you can be you know a little mediocre small business yeah but it's all in the connects that you have in your business yes sir that's a fact yeah well uh we got some more things for you coming up right here on open eye uh thankfully joined by my co-host Miss Saroma thank you thank you we got the Facebook Live of the day. What's good? You know what I'm saying? I seen you on the way over here. Yo, what's <laughs> good, everybody? Hey, yes, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, buddy. Yo. That's Scott Rubin. Yeah. Hey, Sean Harrison, what's up? What's good? Oh, yeah. Tracy. Yes, indeed. Queen, <laughs> I see. I got to share yeah. this to you to the page, bro. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm going to get right back to it. What's this one? Oh, OK. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to find you for yeah, so oh yeah, I had to look at, take a quick look at the time because I got something real special on the view today. Oh, sure. All right? Yeah, buddy. On piano, McCoy Tyler. On the song Apple Blue by the John Coltrane Quartet. One of my favorites, yes, sir. All right, back to the open eye. Uh, you know, we keep having to deal with it, we keep going through it. And that's just, you know, the everyday daily racism that we gotta put up with as black Americans here in America. Um black airline passenger embarrassed and heartbroken that white woman asked her to move. See, I didn't like her reaction. I'm gonna tell you straight up. A black Spirit Airlines passenger was told to relocate to another seat after a white woman refused to sit next to her, which she now believes was. Oh, you believe it was racially motivated? Gee, you think? And you were embarrassed and heartbroken that this white. Are you kidding? I wouldn't give a damn. 
I'm going to tell you, because I paid for that seat, and if she didn't want me to sit there, she would have got her racist ass up and stood in the aisle or something because I was taking my seat. Don't be embarrassed and heartbroken because they want to act a fool and be racist, ignorant fools. The hell with that. You got your damn mind, sister. Her, uh, you know, I feel for you. That shouldn't have happened to you, you know, and they shouldn't have came and asked you to switch seats. But like I said, it was me. One, I would have told them to go to hell. I'm not switching my seat. She don't want to sit next to me. For all I care, she can go sit in the bathroom for the whole damn flight. The hell with that. I she mean, did. you know it's sad. Because if that plane was to crash and that she needed that black girl to pull her mm -hmm. and help her out of that seat that would when the plane blow up, mm -hmm. she, she can you help me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then you just walk away, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful what you're doing to people these days, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you never know what that turn of that corner may bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear about um there's always some stuff going on when we try to travel. American Airlines had to apologize to a black woman because she felt humiliated that she couldn't fly unless she had covered up her romper. You know them little romper outfits? Well, of course, the sister, like a lot of sisters, was shapely and had a banging backside. Okay? So some, you know, jealous white female passenger called the flight attendant or whoever. Well, she, she just, you know, she doesn't look presentable to be flying. And so... American Airlines told her that she had to cover up. She didn't tell you so. and, and the sister was a doctor from, from Jamaica or coming from Jamaica. She said, my shorts covered everything, but apparently was too distracting to enter the plane. Oh, they wouldn't even let her get on the plane. That's right. I know, man. I mean, <laughs> listen. War is a mother. Yeah. You understand? Yes, and, that, and when you say war, I mean, it's this is not a game. No. You understand? No. And don't take it as a game. That's right. This this is some things that they doing and presenting to bring back the Jim Crow Act. That's what they're doing. And they trying to insert it in the present. Mm -hmm. And if you don't aren't awake and willing to fight for the cause of staying awoke, I mean, it's going to flip back to that because we got to a leader that's supposed to be in office that's promoting that. Mm -hmm. And and when you promote and make great America great again, America was never great. Mm -hmm. The people in America made it great. Right. So America was always a business. Mm -hmm. You always. see what I'm saying? Yes, always, from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, from right. the, a corporation. Exactly. So mm -hmm. when you're dealing with a business, they're looking out for the best interest of the business, not you. Exactly. You are the consumer you're the customer you mm -hmm. are the the meat you are the product mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you want to keep being the product or you want to stop being a product and get your own corporation because mm -hmm. you are a corporation inside of their corporation mm -hmm. you work every day yeah eight start hours for, 50 hours for week, yourself. right put that into yourself mm -hmm. and change your name yeah. get out of their system mm -hmm. you, you see what i'm saying yeah. i mean yeah. be smarter Mm -hmm. so you can be lucky all the time. You can be smart every day. Now, American Airlines, yeah. uh, what was it? They were recently, well, just a year ago, the uh, NAACP had a travel advisory and advised people, black people not to travel on American Airlines because it wasn't safe and it wasn't good for humanity. And they had just recently. Um, I lifted that advisory just last July, just a year ago. American Airlines, they went through all this uh, diversity training, the racism training, and what have you. And you know what? I'm telling you something. <clears throat> like you said, we at war, brother. And what you have to understand is the police, which I call race soldiers, because that's what they are, okay? Their job is to keep the oppression going. No, hold up. Not to cut you off, but okay. listen. Did you hear about the police on Facebook mm -hmm. getting locked up or getting their positions from being a police, getting them, putting them on administrative leave oh, yeah. for oh, the most racist, for the most all these pages that mm -hmm. they have racist stuff about what they do to black people and mm -hmm. how they kill them and shoot them and don't yeah. even worry about the paperwork and mm -hmm. yo seventy two 
police officers in one city. In one city, yeah. and they going around the United States to every city. So now they warning them. They mm -hmm. they 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 putting it out there so they can take down their their Instagrams right. and their Facebooks. They, they warning them mm -hmm. now, and that's it. See, Amer America warns their people. Mm -hmm. They don't warn us. Oh no, they no, they, no. they never warn us. Oh no, no. You know the FBI a couple of a few years ago warned that uh, many of these uh, you know police forces had been infiltrated by white supremacists. You know I, I always find that strange because I just thought most of them were white supremacists. But you know what the mindset, the corruption of these people. This is this is how corrupt they are. A body cam shows a Atlanta officer stealing from the murder victim. Now, this person has been shot and killed, and what did the police officers do? They stole their money. I be mean, damned. Not only <laughs> stole their money, but put planted some cocaine or some drugs on them and, and made it look like it was a, a drug thing, and yeah. they was the ones that did it. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. We, yeah, I we're mean, they can with. run up on you. Yeah. You, at any time, mm -hmm. I, anybody, yeah. you know, people that's listening to this station, I mean, you never know. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. got to always be on point and prepared. That's right. And remain vigilant. Always watch your surroundings. Watch out for these white supremacists around you because it's not just, just the police. And of course, because, you know, we got the orange disaster in, in office, who I told you before, is not a leader, is not a president. He's a motivational speaker for racists. Right. You know, you hear about the team that was killed by the white man who said the young man's rap music made him feel unsafe. Yeah, so he ran up behind him and slit his throat. And slit his throat. Well, to, hey, listen. Not only that, but what about the guy that seen all the black people waiting on the bus to go to work and all their places they had to go to work? Oh. And he gonna go mow him mow down, down and yep. get out the car. And some people were still under his car and parked on him and everything. And he just got out the car, and taking it all nice and line, and just looking around like he ain't even do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, this, and, is, this is the mindset. And they went and they came and arrested him, mm -hmm. and they let him go. They let him out. He's free right now. He's out on bail. He's, he's, he signed his own OR. He's, oh, oh you, he's, he went out on the OR on some murder. Right. See, this, this is what we are nine, nine, nine people, I think. I'm not sure on the number, but it was, I mean, this is what America is turning to. Mm -hmm. Do they really want war? I don't yeah. think so. No <laughs> one wants no war. Problem. I don't uh, care. I don't uh, want no war. But yeah. if when it's time. You know what? See, here's the thing, brother. What a lot of us don't realize is war has already been declared on our very existence, on our humanity. And if we don't understand this and act accordingly, you know, we lost before we got out the gate. Let me tell you something. There's a new report that came out, you know, that just goes all in line with this. That shows that only people of color are sentenced to death in Los Angeles. Now, plenty of murders take place in Los Angeles by people from all Walks of life, race, this, that, and the other. Okay, but if you're a person of color, black, Hispanic, or whatever, all right, it's more likely. Not only, and not only is it more likely, the fact is that you're most likely going to get the death penalty as opposed to a white man that kills, and they're not going to get the death penalty. They might get life in jail or murder, you know, murder, murder through court. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're doing anything that's murder, murderous through court, mm -hmm. through, the, through the process of law, mm -hmm. it's only designed for the black man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Understand. Yeah, that's, that. that's a fact. You're, a, a white person is charged just like this Epstein thing is fine. Yes. Yeah, Epstein. Him and Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. Same same scenario, same situation, but Bill Cosby was 30 years, 30 years ago. You had no evidence, and plus two of the ladies said they were lying. Yes. So that's up and, to it. Right, that's up to the line. Mm -hmm. And now you have a well-known prestige white guy yeah. that the, the president's been on his airplane with these same children. Mm -hmm. The president got pictures with these children, mm -hmm. and the, no one says nothing right. because it's America. Yeah, we yeah. should have our own enforcement system to enforce on the governments that don't enforce on themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the system that we need to build. Yes, it is. As a people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Period. Yes. As humanity. Because this 
cycle right here is going to end up killing people. We are, I'm already dead. I don't care. I can say I'm already dead because I'm living right now to die for what I believe in. Mm -hmm. So it don't even matter what mm -hmm. goes down with me. I'm oh, I'm, oh, I'm ready. Oh, I heard that. You know what I'm so so it, let, me, let me say something about what you just said. All right. That was the statement of a true warrior. Understand that. Not, there's not enough of us with that warrior mentality. Now, I had said something earlier on, uh, you know, on my preview before I came in. And that's this. Yes, it's important to study our history and recognize, and we do this for our self-esteem as well as, you know, the benefits of knowing and how important it is to know. I said that at the beginning of the program. Okay? And one of the things that we study is how glorious the, the empires were, you know, in, in Africa, Egypt, and, and, and Mali, and, and Ghana, and what have you, you know? And the fact that we were we are descendants of kings and queens, but let me tell you something right now. Not all of us are descended from kings and queens. Some of us are the descendants of peasants and traitors. And oppressors. WHGH 95.3 FM Radio. Yaga! Why are, you, why are you having us with these little <laughs> I always tell him, nigga, he coming. You gotta be fair, though. I'm letting you know. If you coming for me, I'm fighting. So be fair, fight. It's cool. Mm -hmm. You already right, treat me like I'm, I'm, I'm dead already. So there's no reason for me to not fight to the death. <laughs> Crazy. You know, they got enough of uh, mm -hmm. that uh, white is pure. But yeah. our book is says white is pure. It just, you know, mm -hmm. shows them the confusion y'all on. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact, Jack. That's a fact, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Something real crazy, right? Oh, say, can you see by the cops blinding light, which so loudly he yelled at the black heart that's bleeding? Who's brought stripes and blue cars through the carelessness fight over the footage we watch of the black life that's needed? And the cameras red glare, the lies shooting in air, gave proof through the night that injustice still there. Oh, say does the scarred spangled banner yet wave? Over the land of the green and the blood of the slave. Don't deny it. that was a scarred Spangled Banner written by Nellie Marks. WHTP 95.3 FM. <laughs> You know what it is. It's real. It's all real. We ain't playing. We ain't playing no games. We're for real about what we do and what we believe in. And it's for real. <laughs> ain't no joke over here. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, uh, um, we got to hit this before I close out. Right quick. Mm 
respect your own sisters. Respect yourself. Please respect yourself. Stop getting on Facebook twerking and sucking cucumbers. What's wrong with y'all, man? You see that in that uh, Nosa Roma? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> what do you say to that, man? What is going I, on? I'm, I'm an advocate of loving that kind of thing in my own personal time and my own personal, you know, you know, privacy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Door. Yeah, I would. I mean, that's all cool, gravy and good. But when you like doing it and you doing it for the followers, for the for the publicity that you're gonna get <laughs> for the Instagram, Instagram. Uh, famous Instagram second that you'll have in your life. But listen, ladies, and I'm saying this because. They, they are ladies. Mm -hmm. Listen, ladies. In 15 years, when your daughter is mm -hmm. riding in the air on these uh, hoverboard vehicles that's created in this new world order, do you want your daughter to be able to go back in time and say, this is my mom? Doing this, this, and or she become a famous person and and the, the president or something or a uh, uh, Miss America Queen pageant, beauty pageant or whatever, mm -hmm. and you, they can go back and pull up your mother doing this, mm -hmm. you're disqualified. Mm -hmm. And that's what the it's the setup is bigger than what you see. The setup is to get all this uh, that you do yourself in. You know, mm -hmm. when when they give you enough rope to hang yourself, you, you go so far, you don't even remember how the rope went, so you end up dangling. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what they're making it, us do and setting it up for us to be. You think this information is going to leave? You think it's going to be deleted? You think people are going to forget? No, they're not. And they're going to go back and research because this is what we do. We do that. Mm -hmm. We'll go get information that, oh, you didn't say that? Oh, we'll go get that and because we know you said that at this time. Mm -hmm. So and it's like that. So be careful what you putting on video. Mm -hmm. Cause your kids might reap what you doing now. Mm -hmm. That was no Sarova on open eye. 95.3 FM. We got some good commentary. <laughs> Open eye. Open eye. That's what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We, you're great. not playing. We ain't playing with you. You ain't seen none of these sisters right here. None of them. <laughs> Unless they was on stage doing what they had to do. You right. see, in the in the public, they were women, right. mothers, Ladies, right. grandmas. Mm, taking you know care. I mean? Exactly. Strong black women holding up the mail. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna hold the mail up when you got a cucumber down your throat? Sure, that's just crazy. That's just crazy, man. I'm telling you. And what about the what about the what about the the going in the store licking in the got, ice cream? Did you? Yeah, I missed that. Oh, yeah, I went in on that, boss. Now nah, 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 it'd be ignorant. Nah. Black people start going in the store and taking open the juice and putting in balls. Oh my god! Like it, all they, uh, no, now it'll be they'll go get the cops. They'll look for every yo. They'll put out a worldwide order on people. Well, they're looking for that girl that started the whole thing, and they talking about giving her twenty years. All of them should get 20 years. Damn right. Period. I don't care. Damn Whoever right. thinking about Next doing that, all y'all, you don't know That's if they got AIDS. You don't know what type of disease they care. I mean, that is beat, dog. Yeah, that is. Who? That is. What type of game so, is that? So now everything has to be plastic sealed because of these fools, which means prices are going to go up. You know? Not only that, just think of how long they, people been doing that and they ain't been visually taped. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm sick from my ice cream that I ate four years ago. <laughs> my God. <laughs> we don't play with you. We don't play with you, Yo. All right. <laughs> All right. Sometimes you're too hard on yourself. But remember, 
Everybody has a chapter they don't want to read out loud, and that's okay. Take a moment and sit back. Marvel at your life, at the mistakes that gave you wisdom, at the suffering that gave you strength. Because sometimes you didn't know how strong you were until you had to be strong. That's why everything still moves forward. Be proud of this. Continue to endure. Continue to persevere. And remember, no matter how dark it gets, the sun will rise. And as I always say, destiny determines who enters your life. But you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you. And don't treat those as a priority that treat you as an option. Don't treat skills. No Saroma. The Open Eye. Radio. WHGE 95.3 FM. Yaga! Facebook Live listeners, see you next week. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Y'all feeling us? Uh, all right, all thank right. Thank y'all. You know what I'm saying? Tune in next Saturday where we, you know, they know up and getting the information, getting bigger and growing. And everybody that's doing, you know, thank you. 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 Thank you.